So pores like this, they are usually pores wherein you want to put on your comfy clothes and get into your bed and eat some ice cream and forget that you did it, really. And so uh, I'm going to tell you more about this pour and the Soprentice's experience with her first ever time doing this pour in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 284 of 365 days of soap, and George May is tackling a rimmed soap, Amy Warden soap challenge challenge thing. And yeah, rim soaps. Out of all of the, the the soaping challenges that Amy Warden has done over the years, there are very few of them that actually require really good skill. To do right the majority of it it's patience it's batter consistency it's not a huge deal it's time and the desire to actually spend said time on one batch of soap it's not they're not huge deals this is one of those where you actually do have to have not only your oil profile dialed in but also when you're going to be molding it when you, all of the things in order to create a good rim to pour your soap batter into so again this becomes a two-day pour because of the rim and then the secondary pouring inside of the rim thing. George May's never done this. Um, I only actually do rim soaps once a year, if that. There have actually been years where I've just bagged it and not done it at all. And that's usually for the holiday line because a little bit of extra fancy and extra work into those things always makes me feel good. But she's never actually poured any rim soaps ever. So this was her first attempt at it. Now she's using the same oil blend that we used yesterday as well as the same scent blend. So samesies there different color scheme different soap or soaping let's go check out her experience with the rim soap and we can talk about that all in the video okay now we are on to george may's turn for the uh rimmed soap amy warden soap challenge revisit thing now george may has legitimately never poured a rimmed soap not ever that's it's not something that i keep in my line it's not something that i'm super interested in because it's not the most fun in the world it's kind of like pull throughs it's a um more tedious than pull throughs but a higher success rate i have found so when she was doing this she was asking me you know what should I do? Should I do it the way that the tutorial says and like pour a big slab and then, you know, plane off things? And I'm like, well, no, because how are we going to plane it off? It's not fun. And then we talked about doing this with soap dough because Georgia May actually just made a whole bunch of soap dough. So she could have done something cool like, you know, rolled things and then rolled it out with a rolling pin and made some cool designs that way. But she ultimately decided to do it this way, do the same way that I did. And cool, that's that's awesome. So she's using the same oil blend that I used, which is, you know, good. And the color scheme that she has going on here is actually um, not her pick. I actually, I made a one pound batch of soap so I could make the internal core for my soap and I had enough left to do a second internal core. And so I just went ahead and made hers too. And so this is what we have for hers. She didn't get to pick them. If she had picked them, I'm sure the colors would be 
freaking amazing and awesome and so much cooler than anything that I could ever do because she puts together really, really great color stories. But, you know, I, I picked them. So there's that. And so she is dealing with a dark purple, a light purple, a blue, and a greeny, all of that. Yes. And so that will be the exterior rim for her soap. And I, I think it's cool. I actually drew off of this uh, from some succulents that the that she had made earlier in the channel and thought that that would be really cool. And so that's where my color scheme kind of came from for this. And um, with the scent blend, it's still the exact same scent blend that we used yesterday, the Star Showers from Nurture Soap. So that's super awesome. And yeah, it's gonna be sort of the same process that we did yesterday with my soap. So mixing up a one pound batch, pouring that into a slab that is appropriately sized so you can wrap that and you know roll that and put that into a column mold, which you then pour inside of. And we will also have the rim inside of that because, or the, the little mini column inside of that because you know, soap within soap, that's fun. And that's, that's what's going on here. And her soap batter is nice and fluid right now very very fluid right now which is good and it will be you know see popped and gelled and all that jazz again we want to keep the uh we want to make it malleable so it can it can be bendy and all of that and so yeah that's what we are we are working with for for all of this and again i want to preface this with a. Uh, I guess a reiteration. Georgia May has never made a rim soap before. Not ever. Not one time. Never, ever, 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 ever has she ever made a rim soap. So I'm going to reiterate that for no reason whatsoever, right? There's there's no reason behind this. I'm not, this is not foreshadowing, except it's totally foreshadowing. And uh, yeah, so let's watch. Let's go check out the uh, let's check out this pour and see what we have going on for the beauty that she is going to deliver to the rimmed portion of the rimmed soap because you know it's going to be beautiful. It's Georgia May. She doesn't do things ugly. Her stuff is amazing. So yes, we're going to move on to the pouring right now because everything is mixed in really well and still a very thin batter. And I wonder if she's going to let this sit up a little bit before pouring or what she's going to do well with the design, really. So let's look at that right now. She's gonna she's gonna show us right now. And uh yeah, I I'm really <sighs> Okay, so here's the thing with with, with this pour. I'm totally foreshadowing. I'm also, you know, obviously whatever with the whole George May has never done a rim soap before ever. And also that batter very, very thin to be pouring. Well, it depends on what she's going for, but clearly she doesn't want it to be spreading out this far because she's trying to actively move it into a specific place. So there's that very, very thin batter. If you're wanting it to stay in one place for sure. But, you know, the good news is as she's messing around with it in the mold, the other stuff is maybe thickening up a little bit. Although I didn't notice that this, uh, this particular uh, scent blend accelerated anything. And it did not say that it accelerated anything on the packaging. So again, nurture soaps, good on you. Your soaping notes, they are reasonable. I like it. They are reasonable and accurate. So far, so good. We've done it what, three, four times we've used these. And so that's cool. Oh, that's also cool. Yep. Set it up on an angle. Now she may have decided to just switch up the pour at this point because it was such a fluid batter, which, you know, I'm here for totally just mix it up when things go, you know, pear shaped or not what you expected. I mean, it's not really pear shaped with anything, is it? But it is a, not what she expected, I would say for sure. And that is, so pretty like so far that is just oh god that's so beautiful again i i picked the colors for this and i guess the reason why i'm saying it's so beautiful and i'm so surprised is because a there are really there are two really nice purples in there and two because georgia may does better with the uh with the color stories for sure so whenever i actually do something right when it comes to colors i'm like oh hey look at that that's awesome and 
I know that that's maybe overly self-deprecating, but you know, whatever. It, it's all a thing. And this is sort of breaking my heart because this is such a beautiful rim. Now remember, the, the reason why uh, the soap challenge suggests that you actually make a slab and then cut a, you know, quarter inch uh, thickness off of the slab, like plane it down and then use that for your rim. Couple things. One, the thicker the soap, the easier, the more malleable it is when it's uh, when it's cut. So the easier it is to bend it without it cra cracking or breaking. Um, sure. But you can counterbalance that by, again, a good C-pop. So there's that. And also getting it out of the mold at the right time so it's not too overly hard. So yeah, that's that's definitely a possibility. Um, but the other reason is to make sure that your soaps actually have the beautiful design that you've put into them. Because pouring a thin batch of soap like this, a one pound batch of soap, so it's a thin layer, one side is really, really pretty and the other side is going to be kind of not. And so, you know, that's unfortunate. But what I do is I actually turn it inside out and so the top part actually becomes the outside part of the rimmed soap. And I don't think I said that yesterday and explained, you know, how I put it into the mold, but you watched me ro roll it. so. I guess it's sort of self-explanatory at that point that that's what occurred. But yes, um, this is so pretty. It's such a pretty slab for sure. And it's, uh, it's just going to get prettier. You guys is the thing. Like it just gets more and more beautiful as she continues to play with it because this is what she does. She is good at these things and yeah, it's, it's all a thing. It, it is all definitely a, huh, a thing. I'm a, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm not going to spoil anything for sure. I'm going to keep, yes, we're, none of it's foreshadowing. It's all foreshadowing at this point. It's a, I, I, I love her and I love this. I watched this footage as I was editing it and uh, I was just blown away. It was so beautiful. The colors were so good. The way that she had poured them in was so good. And I mean, look at that. That's such a beautiful like acrylic fluid pour thing. And then at the, uh, her skewering skills on this are just, so on point. They're so beautiful. Now with this right here, I actually would have left the skewering exactly like this. Like that is beautiful, beautiful. But us soap makers, we can't stop playing with our soap batter, right? That's gorgeous. I would have stuck with that for sure. And then she takes that, which is cool. Okay. So maybe we can get behind that. That's beautiful too. All right, cool also gorgeous there's two options there for beauty and then she does some more because again we're soap makers we can't not do it but look how beautiful that slab is it is so gorgeous love everything about it that is going to make a stunning rimmed soap for sure and um uh, she sent me this footage and i saw her slab and i was the one to cut her her rimmed soap so i saw the finished product before i saw this and my heart kind of hurt for her. And uh, let's move on to the pouring of the interior and the cut so you can see, you know, why my heart hurt. Okay, now we're on to the pouring of the interior. And this is what I had made before with the batch of soap that I had made originally for my uh, column or my rimmed soap. And so there it is, all its glory. Super awesome. It goes in the middle. But look what we have going on here. A, we had some colors super lighten up, which you can totally tell with, so the lots of soda ash. And look at all the cracking. Like, so much cracking. She didn't even send me the footage for the, the lining of the, uh, of the soap mold. So that tells me not, not happy at all. Like, she's not happy with it. And so I am, uh, Lots of cracking going on there. So 
that lead that's from a number of things right so if you didn't see pop it that's definitely problematic um if it wasn't fully at an emulsion especially with batches that are this scant they're poured this thin if you didn't make sure that you had a nice emulsion so everything is going to saponify correctly you could be dealing with some kind of dry soap um some lye heavy soap temporarily it all sort of works out when it's all said and done um, but also a heat stage is actually very very important and um, so the cracking can come from a lot of different things really and so biggest tip if you're going to do a rim soap this way is again let it set up for about four or five hours but no more than and then um, do the rolling while it's still sort of you know pliable and so there's that and that's all of those things led to uh, a cracking soap and that sucks but is also very very understandable and common for everyone's first rimmed soap attempt because this is one of those things where it's not even exactly about the fluidity of the batter as i said yesterday it is more about actual skill and uh dialing in your recipe and the recipes dialed in we use the same recipe and i created it so it's good and i did the thing yesterday and it was good um but also knowing what soap does at what stages and that's where the technique really comes in to play and this was something that she had never done because that's part of the fun with all of it is uh it's stuff that we haven't done before or that at least one of us hasn't done before and we are literally just going off of Amy Warden soap challenge tutorials to make our decisions in our soaping and so that's what she has done um, I didn't give her any tips or tricks and again she has never learned how to do any of this from me and also I think like I don't know like three ish years ago I had made my my Christmas soaps for all rimmed soaps and she came in and she saw them and she was sort of nonplussed with them. She was like, oh, that's pretty. And I looked at her and I'm like, that's pretty. That's perfect. You have no idea how hard these things are. And uh, now I think she understands it. And she, look, she's dealing with the same thing I was. Oh, look, it's rising. It's rising. It's, it's all a thing. So it doesn't even matter about the thickness of the, of the batter. It's just going to rise. That's, that's a thing. Let's see what she does to make it stay down because she'll come up with an awesome thing that I'd never would have thought about I'm sure like certainly and yes but yeah all that cracking that's going on in there um, she doesn't have a smooth rim around the soap itself it's gonna show up in the cut and I'm also concerned about seepage into the final design um, into the outside really so but her her circle looks really centered and so that's awesome her interior circle is super centered and that's great as long as she can get it to stay down because that would be that's the trick right there gotta gotta make sure it stays where it's supposed to and uh yeah this will be heated gone th put through another heat cycle see pop gel all that jazz and then it will be cut tomorrow but you know like i said i've already cut this i've already seen it all none of this is foreshadowing everything is great good job keeping that thing down you're very smart let's move on to the cut and see what the end result of this cracked rim is and on to the cut and yeah that is the result of the cracked rim lots and lots and lots of leaked white soap over the beautiful design God, her design was so beautiful for that rim. And that is not what we are looking at here. Now, if you wanted to get super like into it, you could totally like plane the sides down to take that white portion off and still get the color, I suppose. But I mean, it's such a pain because ultimately you still have that right you're still working with that it's actually very cool because it looks like a one two three four five sided uh geometrical shape right what are those things called the five the five sided ones is that a polygon 
I don't know. My, my, my second grader is actually learning all about geometrical shapes and stuff right now. So you would think that I would actually know this better because I'm like teaching it to her, but I'm not, I'm not so great at it. What is it? Is it a polygon? I mean, all polygons are sided, right? So is it, what is it? Like a pentagon? Pen, penta, is that five? Pentatonics, five of them. That's pentagon. Right. So it's cool. Like it's super cool. You have the multi side. you have a polygon in general because they're not all five sided there. And that's awesome. Like it's a cool looking soap in and of itself. But as far as like nailing the rimmed soap challenge, yeah, it's not there. It's not, that's not where it's at. It's still a very cool bar of soap though. And the interior swirl with the little guy in the middle, that's super beautiful. The colors are all really nice. I just, oh, yeah, the cracks were a little bit too much with all of that, just a little bit too much crackage. And so as like, as far as like, you know, whether or not Amy Warden would say you've won the challenge, that's going to be a hard pass for her in the nicest way possible, of course, because she's delightful. But that soap is still very cool. And also for the soap challenges, it's something to keep in mind. You just need to get one good soap out of the whole batch, right? Like one insta-worthy soap out of the whole thing. And so these ones closer to the, the top of the bar, they're actually there. They're closer. You could do a little cleanup on those bars and that's a submittable bar. So, I mean, either way, but Georgia may learn some interesting things about rimmed soaps and decided that she never wants to do them again. And you know, fair point. I, I get it. I, I get it because I don't like doing them either. But uh, thankfully we are done with the rimmed soap uh, thing for the Amy Warden soap challenge. That is day 284, the soap apprentices turn at rimmed soaps. I mean, at the end of the day, the soap smells beautiful, the soap performs beautiful, and we could actually take all of those soaps to the sink and wash off that layer of white that, you know, went through her cracks. And cool, it also looks kind of cool in that it's not exactly a round soap. It has like angles to it, which is cool. I mean, I like that. But for a soap challenge, that's probably not the bar that you submit. And so it would be back to the drawing board. Her colors were beautiful. All of the things were great. It just, uh, for and for a first attempt, that's actually pretty epic. So all things considered, good job, Georgia May. You did awesome. I'm very proud of you. And these are still bars that I'm super, super proud to, you know, sell. So if you are interested in the rim soap, either mine or Georgia May's, you can totally find them on the website at soapandclay.com. They are there. Drop down. You can select which one you prefer. Same scent blend, same oil, same performance, just a different design. Yes. And, uh, yeah, if you are interested in following me on social media, I'm there. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, do the thing. If you are interested in subscribing to the channel, that would be cool. I'd like new Sudzers, that would be excellent. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, thanks for being excellent. You're great and I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I am out of here for today. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun that does not involve an Amy Warden soap challenge. Bye.